Hi, Bookish Besties. My name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And if you are already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today, we are here to do my March reading roundup. a video series that I do every single month on my channel that incorporates a number of things. First we are going to quickly run through all of the books that I read in March and I'm going to tell you my ratings. I'm also going to be going over a few bookish stats that I track throughout the month and then we are going to go into my monthly haul and unhaul and then finally we are going to balance the books to see if I'm ending up with more books on my physical TBR than I ended last month with if that makes sense. So without further ado let's go ahead and run through all of the books that I finished in the month of March. First in the month of March I finished reading Defend the Dawn by Bridget Kemmerer. This is a book that I had started reading earlier on in February but I I didn't actually complete it until March so we're counting it towards March's books and I gave that a four stars. Next I read The Haunting of Maddie Claire by Simone St. James which I also gave four stars. Then I read The Diamond Eye by Kate Quinn another four star read. Then I read Neon Gods by Katie Robert which I gave a 3.5 stars. Then I read The Happy Ever After playlist by Abby Jimenez which got a 4.5 stars. It was almost perfect but not quite. Then I read the last one by Will Dean which was a very big disappointment for me. I gave it a 2.5 stars and it is definitely one of the worst books that I've read so far this year. Next I read Listen for the Lie by Amy Tintera which I gave a four stars. Then I read Someone Else's Bucket List by Amy T. Matthews, which I also gave a four stars. Immediately after that, I read The Women by Kristen Hanna, and that was a glowing, absolute, no questions asked, five stars. One of the best books that I read, not only this year, but in my entire life. Definitely a new favorite, and I cannot recommend it enough. Following The Women, I read Symphony of Secrets by Brendan Slocum, which I gave four stars. I then immediately went into Zero Days by Ruth Ware, which was also four stars. Following Zero Days, I read Midnight is the Darkest Hour by Ashley Winstead, which I originally gave four stars, but I think I'm going to go ahead and go with like a 3.5 stars just because I don't necessarily know if it has lasting capacity for me, but ultimately I did have a really positive reading experience with that book. Next, I read Murder Road by Simone St. James, which I gave a four stars. Then following Murder Road, I was in the mood for another ghosty read. So I read The Haunting of Blackwood House by Darcy Coates, which I also gave a four stars. And then the final thing that I read in March was actually a tiny little novella by Claire Keegan called Small Things Like These, which I am not actually going to rate. I'd never heard of Claire Keegan. I had never heard of this book before. This was one of your recommendations and this was literally only an hour on audiobook. So I busted it out. And to be honest, I'm really not sure what I was supposed to get out of it. So I really overall just didn't care, didn't enjoy it, didn't connect to it at all. But that's always pretty much the experience with novellas, especially ones that I have no investment in. So I'm going to go ahead and not rate that one at this time, just because I don't feel it would be fair to do so. Moving on into the bookish stats. In March, I read 15 books and a total of 5,725 pages. Out of all the books that I read, I had no DNFs, no one 1.5 or two star reads. I had one 2.5 star read, which was the last one by Will Dean. I had zero three star ratings, oddly enough, but I had two 3.5 star ratings, nine four star ratings, one 4.5 star rating, and one five star rating. So ultimately this was a very, very positive reading month in terms of the quality of the books that I was reading. In terms of the genres I read, I classified three of them as contemporary fiction, one as fantasy, three as historical, one as horror, one as mystery, one as paranormal, and four as thrillers. In terms of format, typically all of the books that I read during the month are novels. This is actually the first time this year that I've had a book that was not a novel, but it was actually a novella. So that's a little bit of an outlier there. Out of the 15 books that I read, 14 of them were listened to exclusively on audio and one was mixed, which means I listened and physically read at the same time. And that was Defend the Dawn by Bridget Kemmerer. Out of the audiobooks, four of them were sourced from Audible, five of them were sourced for Everan, and the remainder were sourced from my library, aka the Libby app. And in terms of audience, 14 of them were squarely adult and one of them, Defend the Dawn, is typically classified as YA, but I would say it's probably more on the new adult spectrum, but I went ahead and left it as YA. In terms of author status, as far as I know, none of the books that I read in the month of March were debuts. Four of the books that I read were authors that were new to me, but the books that I read by them were not debuts. So they had other published works prior to the work that I personally read. And then 11 of them were authors that I had read from before. And then in terms of publication year, I was a little bit all over the place. I read three brand new releases that were released in 2024. Five of them were from 2023. Two of them were from 2022. Two of them were from 2021. And then I had one 2020, one 2015, and one 2012 book release. All right, so that does it for all of the books that I read in March and the bookish stats. So now let's go ahead and get into the haul and the unhaul. But first we need to establish a baseline for where my physical TBR stood at the end of February. So at the end of February, I had 59 books that were on my physical TBR. Out of all of the books that I finished in March, five of them were books that I owned physically. However, if I remember correctly, I was not including Defend the Dawn in my overall physical TBR numbers at the time in February because I was actively reading that. So we're only going to count the other four books that I read in March that were on my physical TBR. So we are currently standing at 55 books on my physical TBR going into all of 
the books that I hauled for the month of March. Now March was actually my birthday month and I was not intending on hauling very many books in March but some of you lovely subscribers were so very kind and generous and actually sent me quite a few books for my birthday which I was absolutely not expecting. So my intake numbers actually went up in the month of March but I ultimately ended up reading a lot of those as well. So let's go ahead and see all of the books that I hauled for the month of March. So first let's go ahead and talk about the books that I selected for my March book of the month box. First we have Murder Road by Simone St. James which I did already mention that I did read at the end of March. This is a paranormal thriller that follows a married couple who are going on their honeymoon and they get a little bit turned around and they end up on this very isolated stretch of road. It's a very infamous road in this town because a lot of people have mysteriously died on this road and as they are driving down it they see a woman who appears to be in distress and when they get closer to her they realize that she is covered in blood. They take her to the nearest hospital and she dies and so April and Eddie actually become murder suspects not just for this girl's murder but for all of the murders that have happened previously in the last few years on this road. So you're following April and Eddie as they are trying to uncover what actually happened because they know that they are not guilty and they soon start to find out that something paranormal is in place. This was a wonderful read. Like I said, I gave it a four stars. Simone St. James does ghosts very, very well and this was no different. And this thankfully does not need to get added to my physical TBR because I have already read it. Then I had Kill For Me, Kill For You by Steve Cavanaugh. This is one that I was actually very surprised to see featured on Book of the Month because they have not featured him in the past, but I'm a very big fan of his series featuring Eddie Flynn. It's a legal thriller. Um, I'm not really sure, but I think that this is kind of like a strangers on a train situation. It says one dark evening on New York City's Upper West Side, two strangers meet by chance. Over drinks, Amanda and Wendy realize they have much in common, especially loneliness and the intense desire for revenge against the men who destroyed their families. As they talk into the night, they come up with the perfect plan. If you kill for me, I'll kill for you. In another part of the city, Ruth is home alone when the beautiful brownstone she shares with her husband, Scott, is invaded. She's attacked by a man with piercing blue eyes who disappears into the night. Will Ruth ever be able to feel safe again while the blue-eyed stranger is still out there? As these storylines collide in this Hitchcockian and heart-racing psychological thriller, Kill For Me, Kill For You grips you and doesn't let go until the shocking conclusion. So I absolutely knew that I had to pick this up based on my past experience with Steve Cavanaugh and I'm excited to get to this as soon as my hold for the audiobook comes in for my library. Next, another one that I managed to get to in March was Listen for the Lie by Amy Tintera. This follows our main character Lucy and everybody thinks that she killed her best friend Savvy. She's been talked into coming back home for her grandmother's, I think it was like 80th birthday, there's going to be this big shindig. She and her grandmother are really close so of course she's returning but everybody in the town like I said thinks she killed her best friend and not only that but there's now a podcast going on about the crimes that actually happened. So the podcaster is there in town and Lucy agrees to meet with him because she honestly does not remember what happened the night that her best friend was murdered. She absolutely could be the killer or she might not and she wants to find out the truth. So this is following her and the podcaster's investigation into what really happened that night. There is a podcast element to the story. I thought that this was fun. It didn't really take itself too seriously and I had a good time reading this. So luckily this is one that I don't have to add to my physical TBR. I gave it a solid four stars and I do recommend. And the very last book that I slipped into my book of the month box was actually Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. I actually finished this in February and I wanted to go ahead and have a physical copy of it because I enjoyed it so much. This is actually a science fiction story that follows our main character, Dr. Ryland Grace. He is a scientist that is being essentially sent on a suicide mission because the earth is at risk of basically dying out because something is killing the sun. Something is eating energy from the sun. And if they don't solve this problem, earth is going to encounter a massive ice age and a lot of people and species are going to die. So this follows his journey as he's essentially trying to save earth, but also what happens when he comes into contact with an alien species who is also trying to save their own planet from the things that are stealing energy from the sun as well. And it was just a wonderful friendship. It was definitely different from anything that I've ever read before. I really was fascinated by them as they are trying to build a shared vocabulary so that they can work together to solve this problem. And it was just a phenomenal good time. If you have the opportunity to listen to this on audio, I highly, highly recommend. The audiobook narrator of this is 100% fantastic. It was almost like listening to a full cast and I cannot recommend it enough, but I just wanted to have a physical copy of this. So of course, this is not being added to my physical TBR. And then of course, March was the release date for Empire of the Damned by Jay Kristoff, which is the second book in his Empire of the Vampire saga. This is the original UK edition. I don't think that there's anything really special about it. I just love the UK covers of this series much more than I love the US covers. And then I also picked up the Goldsboro special edition, which has these beautiful purple sprayed edges. It is a signed edition. I wanted to go ahead and at least get one special edition of the story since I missed out on all of the special editions of Empire of the Vampire and I wasn't able to snag the Illumicrate special edition of this, which absolutely broke my heart because those are some of the most beautiful books that I've ever seen. But I'm super glad to have this one and I'm going to jump into this one basically as soon as the hold comes in for my library. And this is definitely being added to my TBR, but I'm only going to count it once since obviously I don't need to count two copies of the same book. And then the last of the books that I'm hauling here today are actually all of the gifts that were so very, very kindly sent to me, starting with Someone Else's Bucket List by Amy T. Matthews. This was very generously sent to me by Nicole over at Noteworthy Fiction. So thank you so much, Nicole, for this wonderful gift. This follows our main character, Jody, who is in the throes of grief. Basically, she just lost her sister, who was her best friend. And her sister was actually a very well-known influencer on Instagram. And her sister has kind of arranged it that 
that after she passes away, Jodi is going to be required to finish her bucket list because her sister had this very elaborate bucket list of a hundred things that she wanted to accomplish before she died. And she was down to like, I think it was like the last six or seven. And so now Jodi, who is very much the opposite of her sister, she's very much an introvert. She has very low self-esteem, low confidence. She's not a traveler or anything like that. And now she's having to go out and complete her sister's bucket list. And ultimately I had a really good time with this. I actually also really enjoyed the love story that happened in here and just kind of watching Jodi grow as a character and feel more confident in herself and discover her self-worth while also dealing with the grief of her sister because that is still very raw and real throughout the entirety of the story. So ultimately I felt like this was a very solid contemporary story and because I read it it is not going on my TBR. Also as per usual the sun is doing its own thing in here so I apologize if the lighting keeps getting light and dark light and dark. I'm doing my best to adjust the brightness settings on my camera as I notice it but I'm not always noticing the subtle changes so I really apologize for any fluctuation in light that you were seeing. The sun just likes to do its own thing and I have no control over it. And then next I was completely spoiled by Jillian who actually sent me three books. I was absolutely flabbergasted when I opened the package. First I have Zero Days by Ruth Ware. This was the only Ruth Ware that I had not read up to this point. I do know that she has a new release coming out this year but as of now I have read her to zero and I would say that this is a departure from anything Ruth Ware has done in the past because this is definitely a lot more fast-paced and a lot more action-packed. So if you have tried Ruth Ware in the past and you haven't liked anything by her I would highly recommend picking this one up. This follows our main character Jacintha Jack Cross and her husband Gabe. They are what's called penetration experts and that means companies actually hire them to essentially break into their companies to find safety and security flaws. And at the very beginning of the story, they are doing one of these penetration tests. Everything seems to be going well, but unfortunately, when she gets home, she arrives at a horrific scene in that her husband Gabe's throat has been viciously slashed and he is dead. And now she actually becomes a prime suspect in his murder. So she flees, she goes on the run as she is trying to determine who did this to her husband. So like I said, it is very fast paced, very action packed. It is engaging, it is compelling, it is going to keep the pages turning. And I think that Ruth Ware did a really good job of this one. Like I said, it's very much out of our wheelhouse. It's different from anything that she has ever written before and I enjoy this one. Highly recommend. And then of course because I did read that book it is not going on my TBR. Similarly I have Symphony of Secrets by Brendan Slocum. I had read The Violin Conspiracy by him last year and I enjoyed it so when Jillian saw this on my wish list she wanted to send it to me because she liked this more than The Violin Conspiracy and I have to agree. This follows our main character Dr. Bern Hendricks. He is actually a professor of music at a local college but he is also one of the four most authoritarians on a composer from the early 20th century named Frederick Delaney. And so one day he is actually called upon by the Delaney Foundation because they have made a very huge discovery. Frederick Delaney prior to his death was working on compositions based around the five colors of the Olympic rings and there was one ring that had gone missing. It had been lost and so he had to do a completely new composition and now they are claiming that they have found the original composition for the red ring and so Byrne is being asked to go to the foundation and kind of basically decode the original composition because Delaney was known for leaving very cryptic symbols all over his compositions rather than standard like musical notations and things like that. So Byrne is being asked asked to go to the foundation to kind of decrypt and find the differences between what was actually released and this original composition. And throughout this investigation, he comes to learn that Frederick Delaney might have had a lot of help with his compositions. In fact, he might not be responsible for them at all. In fact, he believes that they were written by a young black woman named Josephine Reed, who was never really credited. Freddie was a white composer who believed that having Josephine's name on these compositions would kind of hinder their sellability. So you're following Byrne in the present as he's trying to uncover the mystery of Frederick Delaney in the past. And you're also following Frederick as he's meeting Josephine and what they're they're going through as they're making music together and so on and so forth. I found the story incredibly compelling. This very much reminded me of Big Lies in a Small Town by Diane Chamberlain. The stories are very very different but they both have the mystery in the past that is trying to be solved in the present and there's definitely an artistic aspect to both of those stories as well and I really really enjoyed this overall. So again this was a solid four stars and will not be going on my TBR because I read it. And she also sent me this beautiful Chiltern edition of Jane Eyre. Now Jane Eyre I read I think it was in early 2022 so I have definitely read this story and I don't plan on rereading it but I did want the children editions. They are some of my favorite classic editions. So thank you again, Jillian. You spoiled me so, 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 so much. And this one is obviously not going on my TBR because I've read it already. I also received the 10th anniversary edition of The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon. This was a book that I had on my TBR for a really, really long time. I had the original edition of it, but when I heard that she was re-releasing these and she had made a lot of updates to the series, I went ahead and sold my original edition and added these to my wish list. As you can see, this is just the dust jacket because I'm actually over halfway through with the story. I have just under 200 pages left to read, so I will be finishing it here within the next week or so. This was so kindly sent to me by Samira. I was really surprised, of course, when I saw this come into me. And since I was in search of my next immersion read, this just came at the right place, right time. So I immediately picked this up. So I'm very glad to be reading this. I'm enjoying it so far. I'm not going to be adding this to my TBR because like I said, I am over halfway through and I will be finishing it very, very shortly. But I'm very glad to finally be getting to this one after so long. And the very final book that was so kindly gifted to me in the month of March was The Huntress by Kate Quinn. This was kindly gifted to me from Laura at Laura Reads. And this actually just 
came in from my library. So I will be getting to this next. Y'all know how I feel about Kate Quinn and her World War II historical fictions. So I am hyped to get into this one. And this one will go ahead and go on my TBR because I haven't actually gotten to it yet. All right, so if I've been keeping track of my numbers correctly, I currently have added three books onto my physical TBR. So I am now at 58, which is one less than I ended the month of February on. However, I do have a couple of books that I wanna unhaul. I'm going to just run through these really, really quickly because I'm actually hosting Sprint and the Sprint is going to be up in about 10 minutes. So three of these, if you've watched my recent TBR video, these will have been mentioned and you will already know why I'm unhauling them. I have Be Still My Heart by Emily McIntyre and Seb R. Miller, The Things We Leave Unfinished by Rebecca Yoros, and The Coppersmith Farmhouse by Debney Perry. And then finally, I think I'm going to say goodbye to Haunting Adeline by H.D. Carlton. I've heard really, really amazing things about this. This is supposed to be like a super dark romance, but I think I'm just going to go ahead and let it go. All right, so out of all of the books that I hauled in the month of March, only three of them are being added to my TBR because I've read the rest and I'm actually unhauling four of them. So if my math is correct, that means I'm ending the month with 54 books on my physical TBR. So my TBR numbers are definitely trending in the right direction. Every single month so far, they have gotten a little bit lower and lower and I'm hoping to continue that. I definitely don't plan on hauling nearly as much books in the month of April. So it shouldn't be so bad, I guess, depending on how book of the month goes. Book of the month has been slaying it recently. We're gonna see. But anyway, y'all, that is it. That is my March reading roundup. Please comment down below and let me know what you think of this video series and what you think of my reading month in March. I'm very, very pleased with a lot of the things that I read. Or if you've made it to the end of this video and you're not feeling chatty, go ahead and leave me some type of space emoji in honor of Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. Y'all know that I love seeing your comments down below. I really appreciate the engagement and it helps me and my channel so, so much. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I typically post two videos a week, one on Wednesdays, one on Sundays, and I would love to connect with you in any of those future videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which I always leave linked down below along with the books that I may talk about in a video. Until next time, y'all. Bye.